So as I said, uh, I wanted to review all this information. So uh, instead of just leaving it out there, um, these are the last two pages of 1.4 in class notes. I want to know if my coin flips have, well, what impact strength of evidence? The distance that the observed statistic is from the mean of the null distribution would have, uh, would have an effect. So let's review what, what do we mean by that distance. So I want to know if my coin flips heads 50% of the time in the long run. I flip the coin 100 times and I get, 64, I get heads 64 times. Run a simulation and make a conclusion about the coin. So <clears throat> we're trying to compare, recall, the whole hypothesis testing is I did this coin flipping thing and I get, it, I get heads 64 times instead of the 50-50, which makes me think about the coin that I have or maybe the technique I'm using it to flip it. Is there something out of the ordinary here? Is there something unusual? So I'm gonna compare it to the long run proportion, which I expect to be 50%. Uh, and so I set this at 0.5. I take a, I, because I flipped it 100 times, I have to run this. The number of tosses would be 100 times. But I'm going to make my repetitions 1,000. So in other words, I'm going to do this 100 coin flip 1,000 times. And if I get 64, it'll show up as 64, one dot here. If I get 64 100 times, there'll be 100 dots at 64. If I get to head 64 times. If I get heads 50 times in all of them except for one, and one I get 64 heads, there would be one dot here and 99 dots at 50. Okay? So I've set this to 64, and I'm looking for uh, the most extreme results that are 64 or more. So I'm basically looking for anything to the right of this red line. I'm looking at the right hand tail, the greater than or equal to tail. I'm not running a two-sided test. I'm running a one-sided test. And so now I'm going to run the uh, simulation. And so I get 64 heads however many times. looks like four out of 1,000 times, which means I have a 0 .004 p-value, a p-value of 0 .004, OK? That is very strong evidence that this is an unusual event and there's something going on here. We could calculate the, the standardized statistic or the standard statistic, the z-score, by taking my 64, subtracting my mean of 50.195 and dividing it by my standard deviation. But it's gonna be two, three standard deviations away, at least, I think. Uh, let's see, 64 from 50 is 14. Yeah, it's going to be over three standard deviations away. Now, change the scenario. I want to know if my coin flips 50% of the time in the long run. I flip the coin 100 times and I get 80. I get heads 84 times. So now we're going to run this simulation again, except not looking to see if 64 is unusual. We're going to look to see if 84 is unusual. And so my p-value was pretty darn strong with 64. What do you think is going to happen with a p with a 84? Will it get will it become, will my p-value be smaller or less, meaning that it's a stronger case against the null. So we're gonna run this, 1,000 samples, everything's the same, all I did was change the 64 to 84. And I get zero, zero uh, flips, uh, zero simulations that, got, that had 84 heads, none. So this is much stronger, and look, if my my uh, mean is here at 50, 50.009, or around 50. The distance that 84 is away from that 50 is greater than the distance that 64 was away from the 80, or excuse me, from the 50, okay? So this is trying to tell you the distance that the observed statistic is from the mean of the null distribution has an effect. The farther away it is from the mean, the stronger the effect. Write a general statement about the effect that the distance of an observed statistic from the mean has on our conclusion. So you should jot, you should jot those notes down right here on your note-taking guide, right there. And you can write down the p-value information that I just ran, unless, of course, you ran these simulations on your own, which I suggested that you do, but I felt that I should run through this so you can check what you're doing and see if, you know, validate your thinking on this. All right, sample size. I want to know if my coin flips heads 50% of the time in the long run. I flip the coin 100 times and I get heads 64 times. So we're going to go back to this 64 situation. 
and run a simulation and make a conclusion about the coin. Notice you already did this in one, just copy those results. So I'm going to run it again because I didn't write it down. And so I still get something. This time my p-value is 0 0.002 instead of 0 0.004. But again, very strong evidence against the, the null hypothesis. Now what we want to do is we want to run this coin flip with the same situation, except I'm going to run on my coin flip. I'm going to flip a coin at 10,000 times. So basically I'm multiplying this times 1,000. No, I'm 100. Yeah, 100. 64 times 100 is 6,400. And 100 times... 100, which is 10,000. So basically, I'm doing this 100 times, except I'm not doing it 100 times. I'm still going to have the number of repetitions as 1,000. It's my experiment itself. It's not going to be based on 100 flips. It's going to be based on 10,000 flips. Okay? Okay, so I'm going to reset that, and I'm going to set this to 10,000. Now remember, I have to make sure that I change the 64 to 6400. I wouldn't have had to if I leave it as proportion, but we'll just leave it there now and we should be fine. Let's draw samples. Now remember our mean should be around 50. And look, our mean, this stack of dots over here at 50, at 0.5, here's my 0.64. If I left it as count, I guess I could do this, right? There's my 6,400, but look how far away I am from the mean, like very, very far away. So I get zero instances out of those 1,000 runnings of the 10,000 flips. I got zero times where I got 6,400 uh, heads, which means this is extremely unusual, uh, more unusual than this. And so what can, we, what can we conclude about sample size? If I increase my sample size, um, it's that table clock, tablecloth effect that uh, Nathan Tintel was talking about. Remember we mentioned it in class. If you have a tablecloth and you lift it up so that there's that peak that looks like a distribution, a bell-shaped curve, that, think of that as the sample of 100 flips and 64 or however many heads. But just think about it as the, as the um, long, long run distribution or long run proportion of heads and tails or coin flips. So that peak of that tablecloth, as I'm lifting it up in the middle, is at 50, and my tails drop down and extend out to the ends of the table. When I increase the number of tosses, meaning I increase the sample size, I have to in increase the height of that tablecloth, in this case by uh, 100 times. It's got to be 100 times taller. So my tablecloth has a limited amount of length, it's going to pull in. So in other words, instead of making a like a, a flat, like a castle, like a two-story building with some castle walls, I'm making a 40-story tower instead by lifting up the, by lifting up the uh, tablecloth. And so my tails recede or go towards the mean, and so I get this really tall tower with very short tails, and my 6400 is way over here to the right. And then this third part, one-sided versus two-sided test. So holding all, I'll read, holding all the things constant, the p-value for a two-sided test is twice the size of the p-value for a one-sided test, approximately twice the size in a simulation, exactly twice the size in a theory approach. Um, because remember I talked about it, it's really the area under that little tail. And when I count two, that area is multiplied by two. So using a two-sided two test instead of a one-sided test will make for weaker evidence against the null hypothesis. So keep that in mind. When I do a two-sided test, my results are not going to be as strong. So why would we ever do two-sided tests? Because two-sided tests are more common in scientific studies, so we need to understand it. And because they require stronger evidence, when you uh, prove something based or you reject a null hypothesis based on a two-sided test, you've explored all outcomes. Instead of just saying it'll be greater than, you've also explored if you're going to be less than, or more specifically, you're exploring that the, that the coin flipping, for instance, is not occurring at 50%. So it just has to be different from that and different enough to have a uh, strong result. So let's run, let's do this stuff here under the example. So I want to 
I want to know if my coin flips 50% of the time, blah, 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 same thing. I flip the coin 100 times and I get 64 heads. So let's go back and change this to 100. Change this to uh, proportions, so it's still going to be 64. Uh, let's change the proportion now. It's going to be 0.64. Yeah, so this is the one-sided test. So I'm looking for, for greater than. It should be like 0 0.002 or 0 0.004. That's what I got so far. And so we're going to draw samples. We got 0 0.003. So I've got three, three results, three different p-values. This is all approximately the same. So now we're going to see if it's different. So remember, uh, one-sided test, if it's greater than or equal to, two-sided test if it's less than, or excuse me, one-sided test is greater than or equal to, or if you're thinking it's going to be less than or equal to. But a two-sided test is neither of those things. It's I am not going to be equal to 50%. By how much? Well, this far away in the greater side and this far away in the less than side. And then we'll run the simulation again. So let's hit reset. And uh, nothing else changes. So I'm going to run the sample. And so notice how I get 0 0.006. It's still strong enough evidence. It's because I had two on this side and four on that side. Add those together and I get six. So that's how I get 0 0.006. But notice that my p-value is twice the amount of that 0 0.003 just previously. Okay? It's twice the amount. Why? Because I have two of those same size tails. That's a way to think of it. So write a general statement about of the effect regarding a one-sided or two-sided test. I would say personally that a one-sided test is can give you evidence and it's easier to uh, reject the null hypothesis, but a more rigorous test, a more convincing test would be a two-sided test where we, uh, where the alternative hypothesis is just that my result is not equal to my null hypothesis. All right, so hopefully that was helpful. Uh, I'll see you on Monday. Bye.